Good day and welcome to lecture seven in mathematics two. Uh, today we are going to talk about a series. So here is the plan of today's lecture. And in the first part, um, I'm going to introduce the concept of a series. Now, in order to understand the series, we need to begin with a sequence, right? So if we have a sequence, then um, to every sequence a n, we associate a new sequence, which is the sequence of its partial sums. So here is an example. So if our uh, sequence was given by the equation a n equals n, right? So we had a sequence from one to infinity, right? So to this sequence, we can associate the sequence of its partial sum. So Sn is going to be the sum of all our elements of our sequence from one to n. So in this case, it is one plus two plus and so on plus n. So which is n times n plus one over two, right? So basically given an old sequence, a n, we constructed a new sequence by adding up all the elements of the original sequence from one to n. Well, and a series is just an infinite, an, an infinite sum. It is an infinite expression of the form that either contains just the uh, sigma symbol for summation or just like uh, an infinite sum with dot dot dots representing infinitely many terms. But basically, to construct a series, you begin with a sequence, which is a list, and then you just add all the um, elements of your sequence from the first to up to all the way up to infinity. Now, um, if we have a sequence with elements a n, then we can construct the sequence of its partial sums. And the limit of the sequence of partial sums is, by definition, the sum of the infinite series. Well, and this sequence of partial sums, so these are S, M. So our uh, SMs are just a new sequence, and the sequence of SMs may or may not have a limit. And if it has a limit, then the value of that limit is denoted by the symbol, by the, this kind of notation. Is the sum from one to infinity of a n, right? So um, let us look at some examples. So um, here is a sequence, right? Um, so here a n is one over two to the n, right? Um, so the corresponding series looks like this: one over two plus one over four plus 1 over 8, plus, and so on, up to infinity. Now, uh, how can we compute the sequence of its partial sums? So the first partial sum is just our first element, 1 over 2. The second partial sum is 1 over 2, plus the next term, which is 1 quarter, which is 3 quarter. The next term, as 3, is going to be 1 half plus one quarter plus one over eight, right? And we know that this is three quarters, so this is seven over eight. And you, you, you can probably guess the pattern that if you continue in the same fashion, then you will get it as n is one minus one over two to the n. This pattern seems to be correct. Well, uh, later I'm going to prove it Mathematically, so now it is just a guess, but it is a correct guess, right? So, which means that um, if you look at this equation and if you take the limit of the, this equation as n goes to infinity, then one over two to the n approaches zero, right? So the limit of this is one. So, which means that we can write one over two plus 1 over 4, plus 1 over 8, plus 1 over 16, and so on, equals 1. Okay, so for this sequence, we have an infinite series, but we can also uh, consider a different sequence. 
right? So for this sequence, we know that partial sums are one, six, sorry, uh, three. One plus two is three. One plus two plus three is six. One plus two plus three plus four is 10 and so on, right? So here, partial sum is n times n plus one over two. And of course its limit is infinite, right? So it approaches infinity. So which means that this series has an infinite sum. So here is yet another sequence. And uh, if you try to figure out what the partial sums are, then you will see that the first partial sum is just negative one, right? The next partial sum minus one plus one is zero. And the third partial sum is negative one again. And the fourth partial sum is zero again. And in, in this case, the sequence of partial sums uh, alternates between zero and one, right? So in, in this case, the sequence of partial sums looks like this is minus one, zero, minus one, zero, minus one, zero, and so on. And in, in this case, the sequence does not have a limit. Which means that if you uh, write this, this infinite series, you know, in this form, then uh, it is just, it's just not a number. So it is kind of an invalid sum. You, you can write it down, but uh, since the limit of the partial, of the sequence of partial sums does not exist, it means that you, you, you cannot really find, find any particular value, right? Uh, and you, you can guess that the answer to, to the, this question is that there might not be a number which the infinite uh, sum of our series approaches, all right? And if such a number exists and is finite, then, so notice that here, the S should be a number. So which means that S cannot be infinite. So if uh, the limit of the sequence of partial sums is a number s, then we say that the series converges and its sum is s. So if the series is not convergent, convergent, then we say that it is divergent or diverges, right? So convergent or divergent are um, adjectives and conver converges or diverges are verbs. I mean, you, you can say either um, with a verb or with with, uh, with an adge ad adjective, All right? So, but the, the 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 thing about it is that divergent means that both things. I mean, it, it means that the limit is of of the sequence of partial sums is infinite, or uh, it just doesn't exist. No limit of the sequence of partial sums. Okay, um, so. As we already saw, the series of inverse uh, powers of two um, converges and its sum is one, right? So what, what we can write it, this is one. Now, here, we can in fact write that this is infinite because the limit of the sequence of partial sums is infinite, right? But it also means that the series diverges or is divergent and the this series also diverges, but we cannot really write that it equals any well any number or infinity. It just doesn't make sense. All right, so this is the end of the first part of the lecture.